morning everyone and welcome back. Um, hope you're all doing well firstly and I thought today what we could do is go through and show you and review the viral wrapping hack that was all over social media just before Christmas this year and to give you my views and ways of doing it. So without further ado, let's go on. Now, I have had a few practices before just to get measurements right um, and so that I could give you a more informed decision. And this is definitely suited for smaller rectangular gifts that are not very deep at the side. Um, once I, well, I'm going to go through and review it at the end. Um, my main problem with this hack is the amount of extra paper that it takes over a normal wrap, um, which is obviously it's going to be more money. So for a box of chocolates, I don't think the time, the effort and the extra paper would necessarily be worth it. If you were gifting someone maybe for a birthday rather than Christmas when you've got a lot of other wrapping to do, something like a really special gift, like say something like an iPhone, um, then yes, yes, it would look nice. But let's go ahead and show you the best ways I have found of wrapping this gift. So first of all, the main thing you need to do is measure your paper. Right, this is not exact, but this is the best way that I find of it working each time. Let's get a straight line. This is more especially important if you do have a pattern on the other side that's got lines, otherwise you're off to a bad start straight away because your gift is going to have a bit of a wonky pattern to it. Just go through. Already gone off to it there. Okay. So well, we've roughly got a straight line. So what I've found is, right, for each flap over, you need, paper-wise, you need the width of two sides and the front. So I find it easier if you go one, two, three, and that's where you would start wrapping. I mean, you can actually, maybe for once you've moved it on further, you could actually draw a little line there. So. And then just get it straight on the grid line, just move it over just to adjust it. Height wise, you want to move it down because you just want it to come up really to the top of the box. So if I follow that line down, see, it is quite a lot of a faff. Okay, so that would be, let me just get a pen. Okay, so the lines. You don't have to do this, it's just uh, the pen that you're working. Yeah. So if you can see, once I've sort of cut the paper and gone back, I can then quite easily place it on the line there. Shuffle the paper over a little bit. And then we want to do repeat the process on the other side. So you want two sides and the base. So you go one, two, three, and just cut that up your nearest line. Okay, right, so so far you've got this much paper. If you place Place this here, back on your little lines that you've drawn. Now we want this side of the paper to come back two thirds of the way down. Just hold it in place, pull that straight. And I would say, 
I can hold it up to show you. All right, okay, so that's the end of the box there. So I would say two thirds is about, maybe if I cut along that blue line there, have a swivel around. So it's found you having a pattern on both sides. So really, so to do that, you need this much paper. And that's your starting position just down there. Okay. As you can see, that's a fair amount more than you would do to do a normal gift. So to do a normal gift, I would traditionally need to go up this one, maybe roughly to the top. I would have a seam, which obviously you don't need to allow for here initially. That would just need to go a little bit sort of to about there of the box. I'm saying if I cut it along here. Again, going up there, I don't need to go. I go there, that's one, two, three squares. Three squares along there. So then, to do my wrap, to go down there, go down there. Still may need to cut some off, but that's how much wrapping paper I would need to traditionally wrap a box. And remember, this is going to go up proportionally, depending on the size of the gift. So to wrap this box of chocolates, the difference in the amount of wrapping paper you need is quite a lot. So this is the difference to do the foldy over pleaty version as opposed to a normal wrap. Just something to bear in mind. Okay, so back to this. <clears throat> right, you want front of the box to be on the top which is reverse to how we'd normally start because the pleats are at the top when we're doing a normal wrap we want all the edges and everything underneath and outside but obviously this is the feature of this type of wrap so like that and pull down there okay a little pleat at the top and the aim is get that edge there push in use your nails but if you have got long nails be careful not to especially with this thinner paper to actually sort of slice through the paper with your nails hold that in position now do a fold there this we're just going to hold the base and just lift across and then pleat it once on the top okay you have got a little bit of extra paper there you can at this point can fold it down or just get it out of the way by slipping it. Okay, so you've gone to the edge of the box. Again, you have to hold, keep everything in place. Find your edge, edge of the box there. Push in and your fingers down so it's running right flat, flush. You see, to the box there and then you can make your pleat. We'll go across there, like that. Okay, that can be brought down. Opposite side again, so we did this side first, that side second, third again onto this side. So bring that across. Oh, so actually, the back. I would say my pleat wasn't 100% nice. I'll just pleat that down. Bring that across so a better angle. Okay. So I'll just slice that with my finger, but it's going to be hidden, so it's not a biggie. Bring that across. Hold it down. Again, you can. So you haven't got too many, too much paper bulking up the sides. 
can actually sort of cut that straight to follow the line of the box. Right, make sure like that it's along there. You may need to replete. Okay, bring it over, holding the one underneath down. Now here, I mean, a lot of them I've seen, they come down there and down there. I like everything at the edges. So I would make the crease there and then do your fold. Bring it back. At this point, you could use something like your scissors or your um, sellotape holder, just to hold that into position. Free up your hands a little. Now you need Smidge of tape along here, double sided. Okay, make sure that's pulled in nice and snug. Pull this across and smooth it down. And then we're just going to finish the edge of this box as you would do on a normal wrap. You've got a little bit too much there. So you made a sort of mark with your fingers, cut that away. Just save the bulk at the bottom, just gives a nice smoother line. Put your creases. Then let's fold it over there so you've got no white bits showing. I'm sure, I keep pulling it towards me. Okay, and lift up. But now you have your gift there. I would like to do as well is if you get your the pad of your forefinger and if you've got depends how many nails that you've got basically you just want the side of your finger there and the pad there and if you just bend it over a little bit create a bit of a crease it just shows off that pleat just a little bit more don't have to do this, it's just an extra step. Okay, so that, I don't know if you can see, that's a finished gift. If you did have a gift card, let's use this as the gift card. or your little sprigs of flower, or any kind of accompaniment that you wanted to slip in there. This is the small bit, so it have to be a small bit. You do it by then. It's quite a lot of paper there, actually. You're then able to slip your stuff inside. Okay, so that's how we do that kind of wrap. I'm gonna show you now on the box of chocolates, just to show you how it turns out.
there we have it, my take on the diagonal way of wrapping a gift. The Japanese way, the viral way that was on all the social media just before Christmas. Let me know what you think, if you're going to give it a try yourself. It'd also be really useful for me if you could like, if you do like this video, leave some comments just to let me know what you thought and subscribe if you possibly can it doesn't cost anything and there should be a sub button just below okay everybody see you soon thank you goodbye